The latest now breaking news story now. Syria says Israeli airstrikes on the outskirts of Damascus will make the whole region more dangerous and vowed to do everything possible to protect its citizens. One official said the destruction of the country's military research facility was a declaration of war. Syria's state media says Israeli rockets targeted a military research center on the outskirts of the capital. Video footage and eyewitness accounts suggest that attacks hit weapons dumps, triggering large explosions there. Syria says a number of people were killed and wounded amid widespread destruction. Israel is preparing at least for something on the ground. If not preparing, it's at least worried about any kind of retaliation. At the opening of the weekly cabinet meeting this morning, the Prime Minister Netanyahu said nothing about the strike. But he did reiterate that he was committed to the security of Israel. Fifteen hundred paratroopers dropped out of the night sky from an altitude of just eight hundred feet bringing with them nearly 190,000 pounds of equipment. They were the first of some 4,000 soldiers from the 82nd Airborne Division parachuting into an exercise designed in part to prepare for the worst in Syria. CBS News has learned that the Pentagon is making the initial preparations for a cruise missile attack on Syrian government forces. We say initial preparations because such an attack won't happen unless and until the president gives the green light. The attack on the Damascus suburbs, which left hundreds dead this week, is looking more and more like a poison gas was used. The United States warned Syria months ago that using chemical weapons could provoke a U.S. response. Two reports tonight. First, David Martin is at the Pentagon. David. Bob, uh, President Obama's national security advisor has just sent out a tweet calling what happened in Syria an apparent chemical weapons attack. And the commander of U.S. forces in the Mediterranean has ordered Navy warships to move closer to Syria to be ready for a possible cruise missile strike. Launching cruise missiles from the sea would not risk any American lives. It would be a punitive strike designed not to topple Syrian dictator Bashir al-Assad, but to convince him he cannot get away with using chemical weapons. Joint Chiefs Chairman General Martin Dempsey is expected to present options for a strike at a White House meeting on Saturday. Potential targets include command bunkers and launchers used to fire chemical weapons. However, officials stress President Obama, who until now has steadfastly resisted calls for military intervention, has not made a decision. U.S. intelligence detected activity at known Syrian chemical weapons sites in the days before the attack. At the time, that did not appear out of the ordinary but now it is part of the circumstantial evidence pointing toward an attack. The clearest evidence would come from a team of UN experts already in Damascus to investigate earlier, smaller scale incidents involving suspected chemical weapons. Syrian state television is reporting that Syrian soldiers, after entering tunnels that were used by rebel fighters inside Damascus, emerged suffocating, that ambulances had to be sent to the scene, and at the same time, they did find chemical agents inside those tunnels. Russia has held its largest military drill in post-Soviet history, with some 160,000 troops taking part in exercises in the country's far eastern and Siberian military districts. 
Around 130 planes and 70 ships were also deployed in the training, which focused on mass movement of soldiers, transport security, and technical and medical support. The United States is putting an awful lot of attention on the Israeli-Palestinian uh, peace talks, which just got started. And that's important. It's very important. The Palestinians and the Israelis deserve security. They de deserve to be able to live in freedom and justice and, and in cooperation with each other. However, the, one of the questions is, uh, is the United States investing too much time in that process uh, where there are very few people who think that a deal can be struck in the next nine months? Whereas the number one issue in the Middle East is how close Iran is to building nuclear weapons and how close Israel may be to launching a preemptive military strike. Even the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, General Dempsey, is in Israel today because of these rumors that Netanyahu is getting close to launching such strikes. What is the end goal for all of this regional destabilization? What's the main aim here, just briefly, from your point of view? The door is open for an attack on Iran, and that is the precursor to World War III as we know it. It's not something anybody really wants to see, but it seems to me the talk out of Washington and London is that they're looking in that direction. It would come as a surprise the secure communication system transmitting to the Ohio-class U.S. submarine fleet would be the first to receive the command, patrolling both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They are undetected. Fourteen of the 18 warships are equipped with 24 Trident missiles each. Trident 1s and Trident 2s. The remaining four are armed with 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles, which can be outfitted with nuclear warheads. The fleet as a whole represents half of the United States' strategic thermonuclear capability. A single Trident 2 missile is equipped with up to eight nuclear warheads aboard a multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle, or MIRV. A single W-88 warhead delivers the equivalent of 475 kilotons of TNT. In the case of a full deployment, the United States could unleash over 400 such missiles with between six and eight warheads each. From the time of launch, it can take less than 10 minutes for an SLBM to reach its target, or as little as five minutes if it is flown on a depressed trajectory. This allows a very short margin for reaction. Early warning radar systems in Russia, China, and elsewhere immediately detect the missile plume. They can determine the trajectory and intended target of the missiles. Minutes fracture into seconds. This is not a test. This is not scheduled. Russian nuclear command and control systems carried over from the Soviet era leave little time to opt out or delay a full-fledged response.
Within 50 seconds, the missile has peaked above the Earth's atmosphere. It reaches its top speed. The engine drops off. The bus releases multiple warheads, as well as decoys. The radar systems on the ground are overwhelmed and unable to differentiate the two when they are in post-boost phase. Re-entering the atmosphere, the decoys burn off, and the warheads enter their terminal phase. It will be less than 180 seconds before they touch down. President Obama is escalating the propaganda campaign to establish the pretext for a full-fledged U.S.-led military intervention into Syria and beyond. That a red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. If World War were the intention, a Middle East attack would immediately engage the world powers of Russia and China. Inevitably, the United States would employ the greatest assets of its nuclear arsenal. The American people will soon go to the polls to decide the next president of the United States. Recent estimates and reports indicate that the United States military in particular the U.S. naval capability, will be at its peak deployment capacity in the coming months before elements are retired, phased out, or cut from the budget. If ever there were a time to launch an attack, it would be now in these coming months.